one by. I actually been trying to make this video for a couple of times during this year, but I always ended up scrapping the whole thing after I realized it just didn't make sense. So I will do one last try, even did some notes this time. This will be a lot of talk and no fancy bike porn b-roll, a lot of weird explanation in my sketchy English. So if you have no interest in one by whatsoever, uh, you might want to skip this one. It's just a warning. So since I released my one by conversion video about two years ago, I think that was even before I unleashed my beautiful impeccable English to the world. Since then I've gotten a lot of questions about one by and it's still one of the most common topics I still get asked about to this day. So in previous attempts of making this video I tried to address every single pro and con and every single scenario you could imagine but in the end that just made everything very confusing so in this attempt I will try to keep it simple and base everything around my own experience from when I decided to go for this conversion. I will also split this video into three chapters not three separate videos everything in one video but just to keep me from going off on weird tangents and also you can skip the chapters that you don't really find interesting. The end goal though is to help anyone thinking about going one by to figure out if it's really something for them or maybe not. So let's start with chapter one. So if you're like me riding with climbing in mind, I'm assuming you want a widespread cassette. The two issues in my opinion are the gaps between the gears and the low or high, well, the fastest gear. Is the fastest gear fast enough? As you might have read or heard, there's a lot of talk about 2x having a lot of overlapping gears and the number of unique gears is actually only about 14 or something like that. Even if that is the case, you still can't get away from the fact that one by will have bigger gaps between gears, especially with a large range climbing cassette, like an 1142 for example. So that brings me to the question I get asked quite a lot and it goes along the lines of, I want to go one by, but I'm worried about the gaps. Is it really that noticeable? To this, my response is, if you're worried about the gaps, and you're very picky about your cadence, you most likely will be bothered by the gaps. So in that case, I probably wouldn't recommend you going one by without trying first at least. The second issue regarding the fastest gear, is it fast enough? Do you need to be able to pedal downhill at 70k an hour? If that's the case, you can also forget about one by. Again, with a climbing gear setup in mind. As an example, my setup, I have a 42 chainring and an 11 to 40 cassette on my roll wheels. And in that 42-11 combination, I feel I spin out around 58 k's an hour or just above that. And by spin out, I mean I can't really put any more power into the pedals. We are spin with no real forward momentum, so to speak. So if that's not enough for you, one by might not be ideal in your case either, or you need to get a bigger chain ring and a set with a 10 tooth on the bottom. <coughs> so I think I'm coming down with something right now, but um, I will try to push through this anyway. So with those two major issues in mind, why did I go for a one by setup in the end. Regarding top speed, spinning out at 58 or something k's an hour is definitely not an issue for me. That doesn't make the riding less enjoyable in my case. On the contrary, with my history of crashing, it's probably, no, not probably, definitely a 100% good thing. So then we have the gaps. I am definitely not picky with my cadence. I feel comfortable climbing in both very low and high cadences, like anything from 60 to 100 RPM is fine by me. And by comfortable, I mean, I can do it without any major issues. Of course, like most people, I have a preferred range, 
but yeah, it's not a huge deal for me. But I will say the only time the gaps are bothering me is on the two smallest cogs when I'm going from 11 to 13. Not having that 12 tooth in the middle, especially the only time I really feel something is missing. And that's also why I did that Frankenstein cassette with an extra 12 in there. And you can check that video out up here somewhere if you're interested. The gaps on the climbing range of the cassette though, I actually think suits me better than the tight range that you get from an 11 to 28 for example. That might not be the case for everyone though, but I will cover this a bit more in chapter 3. So with those two issues out of the way, I could then just focus on the positives of going one by for me. And that's to get rid of that front Mac and make the whole gearing setup a bit more simple. And a bonus for me, as I'm using DI2, I can uh, set up my shifting to shift the same way on both shifters. So I can shift all gears one handed with either hand. I realize this is not an important point for anyone apart from me probably, but having a camera in my hand and filming or taking photos or even drinking or something, it's extremely appreciated in my book. I made a video about my DI2 setup for one by as well. So if you're interested to see how I have it set up, check this video. You can potentially save some weight going one by as well, depending on mostly the cassette you go for. That was really not the main reason for me going one by though. I was more after the lower gears for climbing. My previous 2 by setup had a 5034 with an 1132 cassette in the back and I wanted to get at least a 1 to 1 ratio specifically for climbing gravel and riding the bike fully packed. Eventually I got that 46 cassette as well so I went even lower than 1 to 1. Now during the last year there has been a lot of new sub compact alternatives with Shimano coming out with their gravel group set and SRAM with their new philosophy around gear ratios. This particular point of having really low gears doesn't really matter that much anymore to be honest. You can even get the two by setups now with a clutch derailleur so yeah it's not the main point of going one by anymore in my opinion. Last but not least for me I love the look of a one by setup especially on a disc brake bike. I realize this is totally the personal opinion. On the other hand, I know there's a lot of people that, for example, really hates the look of a dinner plate cassette in the rear. And that's a valid opinion as well. So if you're in that camp, again, one by is probably not up your alley. So that's my own reasoning for going one by, but I always try to emphasize that I don't think one by is superior to two by. It's just a personal preference and there's no really right or wrong answer for everyone you just need to figure out what would work for you i should also add though that i don't race anymore i don't really train specifically anymore either the only time i really go hard is when i'm climbing and there's a few hill repeats from time to time i'm much more focused on the adventure part of riding these days take that into account if you want to use me as some kind of reference which i don't recommend at all So with all that subjective crap out of the way, let's get down to some hard numbers that might be able to help you figure out if this will work for you or not. To help me with this, I will use the website bikecalc.com. It's a brilliant website that kind of looks like it's stuck in 1998, but I promise you it will still accept all the modern gear setups. So this site has a lot of calculating tools for speed, cadence, gear ratios and everything like that. And while the gear ratio number is a very good number to understand, it can be hard to imagine how different gear ratios will actually affect you out on the bike. So the two calculators I will use for this video is speed and then cadence at speed. I will use my own gearing setup, but I encourage you to visit the website and input your own gearing data so you get all the numbers that it's relevant to you and what you might be looking at. So the speed calculator is the tool you use to figure out if that top speed is good enough for you. I will start by simply input my wheel and tire size 
in my case it's a 700c wheel with a 32c tire i will put this in kilometers per hour but you can also put this in miles if you're in the old speak world so i use a 42 tooth chain ring but i will put the minimum ring of 40 and a maximum ring of 50 as that was my big ring in my 2x setup i'm mostly worried about the fastest gear for now so for the cassette cogs i will just put 10 to 15 just to see the difference we get on the fast end. I set my cadence at 100 as I know I can push that in a hard effort and still have some headroom before I know I will spin out. So as you can see in my case with a 42 chain ring and the 11 cog in the back I will be riding at around 49 k's an hour with that 100 cadence. Obviously in my case that would probably be a downhill or with a very strong typhoon in my back but you get what I mean I hope as we can see having that 10 tooth cog uh, on a SRAM cassette for example would actually give you a speed of 54 k's an hour at the same cadence so it's pretty easy looking at this chart to figure out exactly what kind of gears you need to get up to your preferred top speed so to speak looking at this chart you also get a hint of why I feel that the gap between that 11 and 13 it's pretty substantial it's almost eight kilometers per hour a difference between the two gears but to get an even better understanding of how the gaps actually affects your riding let's hop over to the next calculator that's cadence over speed so this works pretty much the same way but instead of specifying the cadence you specify a range of speed with the increment of your liking. So let's start with my one by setup, a 42 chain ring and my 11 to 40 cassette. Here you can specify each individual cog so you get the exact gap between every gear. So the reason I think this is an easy to understand reference is that when you shift the gear, the first thing that will change is your cadence. The speed will stay almost the same at least for a split second because of inertia, physics and all that good stuff so when inputting all those numbers it will give me this chart but let's just focus on the climbing scenario let's say climbing at a speed of about 15k an hour personally I would like to be between 60 and 95 rpm for climbing so my gears would most likely land on this 27 31 and maybe 35 cog if I felt frisky so for example when shifting from the 27 tooth cog to the 31 my cadence would initially go up by 12 then shifting to the 35 cog it would increase my cadence by another 11 revolutions so that's a hard good number uh, that you can look at and leave at that if you wanted to but figuring out the change in percentages would actually give you a more accurate gap feeling in my opinion it would also better explain why i feel that the gap at the small cogs are more noticeable uh, than at the climbing range so i will put up the percentages up on the screen here and as you can see the change between the 11 and 13 is 18.8 percent while the gap between the 35 and the 40 is only 13.4 percent so i think that explains why i feel the gaps on the high gears or the fast gears are much more severe than at the climbing end. I hope that makes sense. But if you don't have your one by setup yet, these percentages don't really make sense. I realize that. So we need to compare them with something you actually can relate to. So I will open another window and put in my gearing setup from my two by setup that I was writing before I went to one by, which was a 50 to 34 and an 11 to 32 cassette in the back and that will give me these numbers. And if you look closely at the climbing range, the percentages are actually not that much bigger compared to when you look at those faster gears. That's a lot bigger gaps. So this was the basic method I'd use when figuring out if I would be comfortable on a one by setup and obviously I'm still on the one by and uh, it works great for me but I definitely encourage you to play around with this site and put in your current setup and try out different one by setups if you're looking to get into this and for sure play around with all the other uh, sections on this site gear ratios and all that kind of goodies is actually pretty fun and I'm really 
bad with numbers and you and I thought it was pretty enlightening. I'm sure there's people out there uh, with other solutions to figure out if it will work for you or not. Uh, if you're one of those people, feel free to leave your suggestions in the comments. Uh, but hopefully someone did find this useful and who knows, it might actually make you realize that one buy is not for you at all and you save a bunch of money instead. So rather than listen to my opinion or anyone else's opinion, use this site to figure out for yourself before forking out a lot of money or deciding on your new bike, etc, etc. <clears throat> Hopefully I can get over this throat issue because the rainy season should be over by next weekend, I hope and I will be able to get some more riding content. I have some good stuff planned. I have some more bike packing stuff and I wanna get some more gravel content out there. Until then, <coughs> I will try to nurse this <coughs> throat. If you found this, <coughs> if you got this far and found this video helpful, feel free to leave a like. Uh, I won't blame you if you don't. And subscribe for more nerdery of bikes, one by disc brakes. No, I'm sorry. We're, we're done with disc brakes, I promise. If you do decide to subscribe, I will catch you in the next one. <laughs> Peace.